Hello there, I'm Alice, a 32-year-old woman. Right now, I'm nine months pregnant. On this day, my husband and I are driving over to his family's home. It's a mere 30-minute drive from the apartment where we live. It's not far at all, so we tend to visit two or three times a month. Today, we decided to make a trip after hearing that my mother-in-law was baking her famous apple pie. She's a very sweet lady. After the loss of her husband last year, she was really down and didn't know what to do. But she's recovered now, eagerly waiting for the birth of her grandchild. However, not everyone is thrilled about us having a child. One of those people is my sister-in-law, Brianna. According to mother-in-law, Brianna married six years before us. But so far, there are no signs of her being pregnant. She even started fertility treatments two years ago. But still, no baby. With all the pressure from around, she's become quite irritable lately. Mother-in-law had asked us to avoid meeting Brianna as much as possible, so we always tried to visit when she wasn't around. But on this day, to our surprise, Brianna showed up unexpectedly. Well, long time no see, Alice. You've put on some weight, haven't you? You're not just lazing around at home because you're pregnant, right? You look like a seal, all round and ready to roll down a hill. I was dumbfounded by her immediate and sharp remark. Hey sis, how can you say something like that right off the bat? She's nine months pregnant. Of course her belly's gonna be big. You're gonna make enemies with pregnant women all over the world talking like that. My husband quickly jumped to my defense, leaving me speechless. Oh please, I'm just thinking about Alice, okay? It's tough if a pregnant woman gets too heavy, you know? I just want Alice to be aware of her responsibilities as a mother. She claimed she was just thinking about me. I knew well enough that arguing back would only cause more problems. Thank you, sister-in-law. Yes, you're right. I should be more careful. I chose non-confrontational words, but she huffed and said, Just because you're pregnant doesn't mean you can be lazy. So start cleaning this house right now. You're lacking exercise, right? You can at least do that much. She then handed me a broom and dustpan she had picked up from nearby and demanded that I clean. But after being scolded by my mother-in-law and my husband for harassing me, she sulked and secluded herself in an upstairs room. I'm sorry, Alice. She just showed up at the house all of a sudden. I told her to leave. Mother-in-law apologized with a regretful look on her face. It's fine, mother-in-law. I'm not bothered. I'm sorry, Alice. That's just how my sister is. My husband also apologized along with mother-in-law. After that, we spent a pleasant time together, enjoying the apple pie mother-in-law had made and sipping on tea. We called out to Brianna too, but there was no response. Although we were worried, she never showed up in the end. However, I had no idea that a shocking incident would occur just a few days later. It happened when I went to my in-laws' house alone because I needed to speak with mother-in-law. As I wondered why the front door was unlocked, I discovered Brianna in the living room. Sister-in-law? What brings you here? I heard from mother-in-law that you had to work today. I wasn't in the mood, so I took the day off. And I was surprised to see you here. You disrupted my cleaning last time. Now please, get back to work. With that, she thrust the broom and dustpan back at me. I decided to clean as much as I could to avoid any trouble. But that day, I was feeling discomfort from early morning, and during the cleaning, I began to feel pain in my stomach. Just as I thought of taking a short break, my sister-in-law kicked my stomach, which resulted in my water breaking. The pain escalated, and I fell down on the spot. Ah, uh, it hurts! Somebody, please help! I took out my mobile phone from my pocket and quickly dialed mother-in-law. The baby is in trouble. I managed to utter these words before losing consciousness. When I woke up, I found myself in a hospital bed with an IV in my arm, and my body was wrapped in an electric blanket. Where am I? Wait, what about my baby? I tried to sit up, but the pain in my abdomen stopped me. Not only that, my stomach, which was supposed to be large, had shrunk, and I was shocked. I pressed the nurse call button, and when the nurse came, I asked what had happened. Apparently, my water had broken, and I had to give birth via emergency cesarean. The baby was small and therefore in an incubator, but was said to be in good health. 
Mother-in-law and my husband, who had rushed in, were also informed by the doctor. Their faces were red with anger. I decided to visit the baby once I felt better, and tried to sleep as much as possible to recover quickly. However, the next day, an unbelievable person showed up in my room. It was my sister-in-law, who had kicked me, and her husband. They walked into the room without even knocking. I frowned at their impudence. And when the two absurd people suggested, We'll pay you! Let's settle this! I felt a chill. When I didn't agree, they lashed out at me with every offensive word they could think of, towards my tired face from the cesarean operation. Thinking that my daughter had to go through such a thing because of these people, something inside me snapped. A settlement? Are you kidding me? To make me laugh, I'll ruin your life. The two of them were enraged by my words and continued to shout at me. What? What are you saying? We're offering a solution with money here. Aren't you thankful? Alice, didn't your parents teach you to obey your elders? We're telling you to settle. Just agree, quietly. My brother-in-law also joined in, and as we were arguing, forgetting it was a hospital room, the door suddenly swung open, loudly. I've heard everything! I'm sorry, but I have absolutely no intention of settling. My husband has a good build and is tall, so his deep voice was imposing. They didn't seem to expect my husband to show up, and the two who were talking so confidently until now were completely taken aback. Ah, long time no see, Finn. It's a coincidence to meet you here. My brother-in-law said this, but his face seemed tense. It truly is a coincidence. I didn't expect to meet you here, and I never imagined I'd hear such words from you two. I would appreciate an explanation. We were all in the room when they said it, so there's no room for any excuses. Hey, don't be so angry, Finn. It's not like we had ill intention. We're just... We just feel bad for what we did to Alice. That's why we're offering money, hoping to settle this out of court. My sister-in-law explained with a trembling voice, but my husband's fury didn't subside. The one who decides whether this will be a settlement or not is Alice, not you. Besides, do you think this is a situation that can be solved with money? Alice had an emergency C-section. The baby's in an incubator. You endangered both their lives. Do you even understand that? My husband exploded, letting his emotions get the best of him. As for me, I also couldn't forgive them just because they were throwing money at us. I agree with my husband. No amount of money can make this right. You will face the consequences of your actions. It seemed like my sister-in-law assumed that throwing money at us would make us forgive them. But this situation was not that simple. Thankfully, both my daughter and I, although she was in an incubator, were fine. But had there been any mistake, we might not be here now, and it seemed like my sister-in-law was entirely oblivious to this. I suspected my brother-in-law felt the same way. Thinking about this, I realized I couldn't forgive them or consider a settlement lightly. At my words, my sister-in-law flared up and raised her voice. What do you mean? This is all because of her! She knew I couldn't get pregnant, and yet she kept rubbing her belly in front of me. Was that a jab at me? I was furious. That's why I did what I did, to make sure she never does anything like that again. Now I knew why she had kicked me, but there was something that didn't make sense. I hadn't met her often since I got pregnant, and every time she saw me, she would go into her room and not come out. So, how did she see me rubbing my belly? That part was a mystery to me. But no matter what she said now, it wouldn't erase what she had done. Neither my husband nor I had any intention of forgiving her. I understand that you're struggling, but that doesn't justify doing something like this to Alice. No matter the reason, endangering a life is never acceptable. My husband explained the obvious to them. But they were each looking elsewhere, not even trying to listen to us. It seemed like they wanted to get over with this as soon as possible. Seeing the two of them not showing any remorse, I felt my condition worsen. Are we done here? I just had surgery and I'm not feeling well. If you continue to cause a ruckus in this room, I'll call the police. Arguing here wasn't going to resolve anything, and talking to the two of them was too hard for me as I was still recovering. 
After my husband kicked them out, I sighed heavily. We had enough evidence because my husband had recorded their conversation. My mother-in-law was also unable to contain her anger because of what her daughter had done, putting my life and that of her grandchild in danger. And so, we decided to press charges against my sister-in-law. We filed a complaint with the police. My sister-in-law was taken to the police station. Afterwards, through a lawyer, we started negotiations. But my sister-in-law insisted to the lawyer, I've done nothing wrong. This woman has been flaunting her pregnancy in front of me, causing me emotional distress when I myself am struggling with infertility. She's not innocent either, so she should be open to a settlement. At first, she had been eager to pay any amount of money, but then she began to claim her innocence. She insisted we should just pretend none of this happened because we were both at fault. When she first saw my husband in the hospital, she was visibly intimidated. But now, determined to avoid paying, she put up a stubborn fight throughout the process. However, she had no idea our conversation in the hospital room had been recorded. As soon as the evidence was presented, both their faces turned ashen. Even with such clear evidence, you still claim your innocence? I'm afraid that won't fly. After enduring so much insult and our refusal to agree to a settlement, my sister-in-law, in anger, flung the coffee that was before her at us. Thankfully, the coffee was cold, so we didn't get burned. Furthermore, their outrageous behavior and language in the office resulted in additional charges, forcing them to increase the compensation amount. Trying to calm his infuriated wife, my brother-in-law left the office. With the assault charges against me and the current incident, the amount we demanded from my sister-in-law had become substantial. When we told my mother-in-law about what had happened, she looked deeply remorseful, saying, I'm so sorry for what my daughter has done. There's no need for you to agree to a settlement. I'll make sure she faces the consequences. She apologized tearfully. I couldn't help but think, how could a grown-up cause so much distress to their own parents? Somehow, I felt incredibly sorry for my mother-in-law. In the end, my sister-in-law was asked to pay a hefty compensation. Shocked by the amount, she called me repeatedly, insisting that we should reduce the amount because we were both at fault. I could not comprehend how she could make such an argument after all she had done. No matter how many times you call, the answer remains the same. We have no intention to reduce the amount, nor to agree to a settlement. Honestly, your calls are becoming a nuisance. Please stop. Because she was so persistent, I ended up snapping at her. This caused her to lose her temper, and unbelievably, she barged into my apartment. Hey, you're there, right? I know you're in there. Get out here, now! Coward. I was resting on the sofa due to the pain from my surgery when she started pounding on the door and shouting these incomprehensible insults. Hey, what on earth are you doing? Is everything okay with you? Your shouting is disturbing everyone else. Please stop. I yelled back at her while she continued to bang on the door. There were elderly people and families with babies in the apartment. Despite it being past 8pm, she was causing such a ruckus. I wondered if she ever considered that people might be sleeping. Of course, my husband was still at work and hadn't returned home. Since I got discharged from the hospital, I've been visiting my daughter every day. Feeling unwell and dealing with her unannounced visit and the commotion, I was at my wit's end. No matter how many times you come here, my mind won't change. Please don't come here anymore, I said, fighting back despite feeling unwell and pale. But my sister-in-law was desperate for a settlement, and my concerns seemed to be irrelevant to her. I didn't do this because I wanted to, you know. It's because of your intrusions that things have come to this. It's presumptuous of you to get pregnant before me. Shouldn't you have been more considerate and waited to get pregnant after us? It seemed like she saw pregnancy as some sort of competition. I don't think pregnancy is a competition, or that it's more honorable to get pregnant first. But for my sister-in-law, who has struggled with infertility for many years, it seemed like she viewed pregnancy in that way. Everyone has different values, but that's no excuse to hurt others. I understand you're upset about not being able to have children, but that's no reason to hurt others. So I cannot forgive you. 
You put my daughter in danger, and for that, you will be held responsible. Above everything else, the fact that she had hurt my daughter was unforgivable. Just then, the sound of sirens could be heard from outside. It seems that someone in the apartment had reported the disturbance. Well, I suppose if you're banging on someone's door and yelling at this hour, it's inevitable that the police would be called. What do you mean the police are here? Open the door! You have to hide me! Despite my sister-in-law's pleas for me to hide her, I had no intention of doing so. The police arrived at the apartment and began questioning her. I also explained the situation from my perspective. Just at that moment, my husband came back to the apartment and I filled him in on what had happened. Considering what had happened before, my husband told the police everything, and they took my sister-in-law away in their car. That night, my brother-in-law called to tell me that he was divorcing my sister-in-law and asked me not to involve him in this issue, a rather self-serving request. Apparently, one of my husband's colleagues had been at the hospital where I was admitted, and he overheard my brother-in-law's conversation. When he got to work, the gossip spread among the female employees, and my brother-in-law was looked down upon. The situation worsened, and somehow, the story reached the HR department. My brother-in-law, realizing he couldn't talk his way out of it, confessed everything. He was then told that someone like him couldn't stay in the company and was going to be transferred to a regional office. So, he doesn't want to get involved in any more problems. I can't deal with her issues anymore. If any more problems arise, I'll be fired. So please, leave me out of it. With that, he hung up, and I haven't heard from him since. Afterward, we received a substantial compensation from my sister-in-law, and to ensure she would never come near us again, we changed our phone numbers and moved away. Even if she ran out of money and needed help, she wouldn't know where to find us. A few months later, my daughter was discharged from the hospital. She didn't have any lingering effects and was growing up healthy. Rumor has it that my sister-in-law was in substantial debt. At first, she was moving from friend to friend, but she was never contributing to the living expenses and stayed for far too long. So they kicked her out. My sister-in-law, who has no place to live and no money, is working part-time to pay off her debt.